So MSCs are immunomodulatory, and now I'm gonna talk about the trophic effects, and I'm gonna pick, because of the next speaker, I'm gonna pick um, acute myocardial infarct. I'm gonna to go to Osiris's data. You, you open up a mouse, a rat, or a gigantic pig, you open up their chest, you ligate one of the major arteries, and what you see in blue at the bottom of the heart is, in essence, what is a, a heart attack, uh, an ischemic area of the heart. Uh, you see at the top of the next panel, uh, inflammation a few weeks later, and eventually what you see is scar tissue, and what's dangerous is not the scar tissue, which affects the contractility of the heart muscle, but at the bottom of the heart, the, to, because the heart has to push a certain amount of liquid through that chamber, the makeup for that mechanical property, the bottom of the heart becomes hypertrophic. You get electrical discontinuity and that's what kills you. So this is uh, uh, the, uh, a, a model for um, acute and chronic uh, uh, heart failure. Uh, this is a brilliant experiment done by uh, a colleague of mine, Mark Penn, on the right-hand panel um, Mark took a mouse, gave a mouse acute uh, uh, myocardial infarct, uh, and an hour later he injected MSCs that were labeled with the cyprase, and you can see in the tail vein, and you can see they specifically go to the heart, they go to sites of injury. It, the brilliant part of the slide is on the left side. This was a control. He opens up the chest cavity, uh, waves at the heart, sews up the chest cavity, gives MSCs. MSCs are dumb. They go to sites of injury, so they go to the incision line and produce scarless healing, both of the uh, uh, skeletal structure and of the skin that's covering it. You can see the bright uh, red cells at, at, at that site. So let's go back to Osiris pigs on the top. Uh, these were given control injections, and, and so they have hypertrophy and scarring, and, and the pigs that were given MSCs, their echocardiograms and their heart morphology totally normal. So this is the mechanism that I would propose um, that uh, account for what we see in these animals. Anti-apoptosis, anti the molecule made by human MSCs, STC1, uh, stops uh, ischemic cells from dying, anti-scarring, angiogenic, and, and mitotic for cardiac myocytes. Here's the phase one data from Osiris's phase one clinical trial using human uh, allogeneic, allogeneic, allogeneic MSCs. In this case, uh, fewer arrhythmias, fewer premature ventricular contractions, prompt return to heart rate, and the CEO says the unexpected finding, and it's not so unexpected since they measure it, is, is a threefold improvement in lung function. People who get heart attacks are smokers. They also have lung problems. MSCs are dumb. They go to sites of interest, injury and, and, and do their magic. This is a different company called Cytori. They use stromal vascular fraction from fat, and, and likewise, this study is uh, for people who have no option chronic uh, heart disease and, and fabulous results from infusions of uh, autologous, not allogeneic in this case, autologous stromal vascular fraction. So, so again, uh, uh, we'll hear about uh, this kind of uh, technology in, in, in the next lecture. Uh, currently, there are three, if you go to the uh, website clinicaltrials.gov and you, and you use their search engine for mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, there are 307 clinical trials in play, probably 180 to 200 of them are active and they're from all over the world and here you have to read all of the lines here because these are all of the clinical uh, clinical areas that the MSCs are being used. I know you can't read any of that. Uh, um, ulcerated colitis, diabetes, uh, liver cirrhosis, and, and what I want to talk about actually is a fabulous paper on kidney transplants. Um, this is a, 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 a study that was done in China. Um, the, the senior author, Camillo Ricordi, uh, published this last year in uh, JAMA. 159 patients, three groups. 
uh, a third of the patients on uh, IL-2, a very strong immunosuppression, uh, a third of the patients on IL-2 very light immunosuppression, so these people had problems. And, 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 and a third group, light IL-2 suppression and autologous marrow-derived culture-expanded MSCs. And, and the MSCs were given at just the most clever time. They were given when the, the new kidney it gets uh, microsurgery to connect the vessels from the host into the new kidney, when they per, per, uh, perfuse the new kidney, take the tourniquet off, uh, at that point, when the blood first, when the host blood went into the new kidney, that's when they gave uh, MSC systemically. They go to sites of injury, sites of surgery, and, and do their magic. And for those sites that they missed on that first pass, two weeks later, they give another separate infusion. The results are, are listed here. Lower incidence of acute rejection, decreased risk for infection, and, and improved uh, renal function after one year. And, and I'll turn, uh, I'll come back to this infection issue because it's an unanticipated aspect of MSCs, a mind blower for me uh, that I'll talk about. So I want to talk about one other uh, academic study I've been involved in, and that's with uh, Robert Miller, uh, who's a professor and has worked on neural stem cells for 30 years. Uh, Miller. Uh, I'm only going to talk about his data with uh, MS, um, and, and he grows neural stem cells as neurospheres, as a ball in culture, and then he takes these balls and he plates them out under very uh, strict conditions and using uh, the markers that I've shown on the right-hand side of the slide, he can quantitate how many neurons, how many astrocytes, and how many oligodendrocytes differentiate into that, in that culture condition. I, I want to remind you, oligodendrocytes are the cells that wrap uh, axons with myelin and serve as insulation. So being an enormously generous colleague, I sent Miller the medium that we threw away usually uh, from uh, human MSCs that were being expanded in culture. So this is called conditioned medium. When he put it on the differentiated, uh, differentiating cells, uh, what he saw was a tenfold decrease in astrocyte formation and a fourfold increase in oligodendrocyte differentiation. So what MSCs make can take neurostem cells and get them to become oligodendrocytes, uh, neuro axon wrapping cells. So we did the following experiment. There's a, a, a mouse model of MS called the EAE model. You put a peptide of myelin in adjuvant, you give it to a mouse, and, and what I've plotted here is in, in the black, uh, black diamonds is the clinical score of these animals. And what you see is the a score of three, score of four means the animal's dead. Score of three means the animal can, cannot have a bowel movement, cannot walk, cannot eat on their own. They have to be hand treated by uh, uh, thoughtful technicians. At, at the time when they get a clinical score of three, we give them a single tail vein in, uh, injection of human. This is forbidden. All of you in medical school were taught you cannot put human cells into an immunoreactive mouse, right? Human, human, human into mouse, forbidden. We do it, and two weeks later, that mouse walks away completely cured of this MS. The mouse, uh, what's happened is the MSCs go to the sites of inflammation, they stop the immune system, they cause the intrinsic neural stem cells, remember, Reardon still has neural stem cells. We can help him. The intrinsic neural stem cells differentiate because of the molecules made by the MSCs into oligodendrocytes, and in serial sections of the central nervous system, we can show you those naked axons have become rewrapped by these new oligodendrocytes. That's curative for MS. We're doing a clinical trial at the Cleveland Clinic with autologous MSCs, 
um, in, in aloe MSCs uh, to try to cure MS. Uh, 2,000, over 2,000 patients, I don't know what the actual number is, but thousands of patients have been treated by Medistem technology uh, to, to try to uh, affect the course of MS. This is a real, this is a curative, potentially curative therapy, not palliative, curative. 